Hey guys, Coach Chris here, back with another video. First one in a while. Um, trying to, I will try to make more videos. Uh, mostly to hold myself accountable to, you know, make myself play games and analyze them so that I can post them here. But uh, also hopefully for your benefit. Um, on that note, thinking about starting a new series. Uh, I feel like one of the things that has held me back in my chess development is that I f switch openings all the time, and I'm really trying to commit to some openings, and so I think I'm going to start a new series on the French today. We'll see how long I stick with it. You know, uh, this will look real silly if in a month I'm playing the Shvesnikov Sicilian or something crazy like that, but uh, anyway, we'll see how it goes. All right, so... Uh, playing the French against an opponent rated 1949 he starts with e4, e6, d4, d5, French defense and at lower levels the overwhelmingly most popular moves here are either e5 or what we see in this game the exchange variation. I think black should be happy to see this I feel like black is already equal on move 3 the pawn structure is completely symmetrical and uh, so if we're already equal, then we can, you know, already start thinking about uh, fighting for more than equality. So uh, this is exactly the type of position I like to play, no risk, where we can just try to grind and grind out and win. Um, so here opponent played knight f3, and I like to play the exchange variation by developing the dark square bishop first. The idea is you clear the way for knight e7 without blocking in your dark squared bishop. You want your knight on e7 to support bishop f5, the best place for white's light squared bishop in this pawn structure is d3. Now white doesn't do that in this game, but that's the idea of bishop d6 first so that you can play knight e7 supporting bishop f5. That trade is favorable for black because this light squared bishop is always um, black's worst piece in the French and so we want to endeavor to trade it off for white's best minor piece which is the light squared bishop so that trade is favorable so that's what I'm going for here but white has a different idea bishop e2 I continue with knight e7 anyway um, once the bishop is on e2, it's arguable that f6 is a better square for the knight. But I'm more comfortable with the knight here. Um, from f6, the knight can get pinned, and sometimes that pin is actually annoying. Whereas when it's on e7, we can just play f6 and kick that knight out. Excuse me, kick the bishop out and control e5. So I prefer knight e7 most of the time. White castled, I castled, h3, trying to deny my light squared bishop a development square. And I wasn't quite sure what to do here. Um, bishop f5 doesn't feel like it does much in this particular position without a bishop to try to swap off on d3. And so I thought that my bishop might end up on e6. And so I started with h6, just trying to stay flexible. Um, I played h6 to take away the g5 square so that bishop e6 is never running into knight g5, threatening to take that bishop and weakening the pawn structure, and just providing a little love for the king. So h6 is kind of a waiting move. And c4. Um, I feel like my waiting move has already paid off. This is kind of exactly what you're hoping for in the exchange French. Um, you're looking for white to create a pawn structure and balance, and that's what he does here. I take, and white takes. So the bishop has taken two moves to get to c4, we like to see that, and white has an isolated pawn. So we already know exactly what we need to do to win this game, and that is trade off as many pieces as possible, try to neutralize white's uh, peace activity and space advantage. This isolated pawn allows white to try to benefit from open files. Um, 
supports a knight coming into e5. It does leave the d5 square as a perfect blockading point for black though. And so the way you win this position as white is you try to win in the middle game with a big attack. With black you try to trade off all the minor pieces and try to prove that this pawn is a weakness in the end game. So uh, now I know where my minor pieces belong and so I start developing them. Knight d7. The knight is on the way to b6 where it hits the bishop on c4 and the d5 square. c6. And so now you see that I'm really doing everything I can to blockade that pawn. That's the idea in IQP positions. Isolated queen pawn. You first blockade it. Occupy that outpost and then look to trade down into a winning endgame. White plays b4, not really sure what that does. It looks like white's idea is to fiend cat of the dark squared bishop, but that is just looking at the back of his d4 pawn. Maybe the idea is to support a knight e5 jump. Anyway, I occupy the d5 square, which is what I wanted to do all along. Bishop b2, and we're on move 13 here, and the engine already says that black is basically up a pawn at this point, and didn't do anything fancy, just developed the pieces um, rationally and in accordance with the pawn structure. This is just the, the don't bingus type of chess I really like. Bishop e6, again, this game is all about the d5 square. I want to occupy that blockading spot and then look to trade down. Knight bd2. And here the engine says a5 is already good to go. I played that in a few moves. First I played f6. It seemed to me like white's only active idea really is to try to jump into e5 with the knight. If that's not the idea, then what is this bishop doing on b2? And so I just played f6 to take that one active idea away. Um, and so even though I... I guess threw away most of my advantage over the last couple of moves according to the engine. Um, the game is still completely equal and I don't see how these bishops cause me any problems and if white isn't causing problems in the middle game then with every piece trade that comes my position gets better and better in the end game. So rook e1, hitting the bishop, might just back it up. The light squares look weak, but I have a light squared bishop covering them, so I'm fine with it. Knight e4, activating that knight, and here, key point, I just developed the rook. You know, very often you don't want to trade a knight for a bishop, all things being equal, but here we know what the plan is. We want to swap off minor pieces so that this d4 pawn gets weaker and weaker. And so I'm actually inviting white to take on d6. White, I think, correctly declines, plays rook c1, and now I played a5. So this rook is no longer covering the a2 bishop, and so a5 now, so threatening to win a pawn, but also this bishop would be hanging. So white takes, and I take. Now there's some uncomfortable pressure on the a3 pawn. My rook is active. White plays knight c5, sort of plugging that hole, plugging that diagonal to the a3 pawn. In attacking b7, I played just simply queen c8, covering b7, covering the e6 square so that the knight can't jump in. Again, just simple chess, just don't bingus, wait for your opponent to make a mistake. Um, that's, that's the kind of chess I like to play. Um, so, rook e2, it looks like white is attempting to double up on the e-file, which I actually love to see because, again, I want trades. I want to get into an endgame with an advantage. I played rook a7, thinking that we're about to see a bunch of trades on the e-file, and if that happens and my queen has to come over here to recapture, I don't want to drop the b7 pawn. So rook a7, the rook is still good on the a-file, and now it has another job of defending the b7 pawn. Queen e1 following through with the plan, but I really like knight f4 because it hits the rook, it hits the bishop. 
So white needs to take with check, king recaptures, rook needs to move, and now the engine thinks this is an inaccuracy, but it's still good enough to be, you know, very, very good for black. Knight e d5, trying to trade down on the e-file. And also I just really like this knight here. Um, so reinforcing that knight a little bit. So white trades, we trade a bunch of stuff on the e-file and white throws in a check and I just move the king out of the way, keeping everything safe and solid. And now this knight would really like to fork these pieces. It wouldn't be winning a piece, the rook can always cover the bishop, but if this bishop drops then the a3 pawn is going to drop. So again, like we can see, you know, material is equal and the engine thinks that black is basically up two pawns already. Just shows you that the strategy paid off, trade down, and as you trade, when you're playing against the IQB, the end games are all great for you. So just keep it simple and solid. Here in time pressure, opponent played a mistake, knight b3. This allows the idea that I just spoke of, forking the rook and the bishop. White covers, but I take that bishop and finally cash in that weak pawn that's been on a3 for quite a while now, um, created by that a5 push. Uh, here, you know, my bishop controls the king's only flight square. Uh, I've talked about this before, but in general, when you can help it, try to have a flight square that is the opposite colored, uh, opposite color of whatever bishop your opponent has. Here, white hasn't managed that. He played h3 early on to restrict my light squared bishop. Uh, so this knight can't move because then it would eventually be checkmate. But uh, again, in time pressure, that's exactly what white does. White thinks, you know, unleashing an attack on the b pawn, but forgetting about the back rank problems. So, you know, I've, I've been trying to do my puzzle rush and puzzle streak. So, um, you know, back rank mates, pretty common theme in those early puzzles. So been doing them, spotted it quickly, played the move um, and, and got the win. And I'm actually getting closer to uh, my all time high blitz rating on Lee Chess. So I've been playing pretty well lately, really trying to stick to the same set of openings so that my mistakes I learned from um, are all relevant and in the opening uh, that, I'm, that I'm playing. You know, if I learn a bunch of lessons in the French and then start playing, I don't know, uh, E4, E5, well then, you know, a lot of those lessons aren't going to apply because it's a very different pawn structure very often. So anyway, trying to be consistent and steady and build on um, the progress I've, I've made. So to run it back, I, I really think um, White's problem here you know, you, you can play c4, that is a, a valid way to play, but um, for black you know what you have to do, you just don't get mated. Um, for white you really have to play up-tempo and aggressive, and I think moves like, you know, a3 and b4 just don't quite cut it, they're a little bit too slow, and the bishop on b2 does nothing. So yeah, um, once there's that, once that IQP is there, the objective is to just blockade it with everything, and then slowly, without compromising your position, trade down into a winning endgame, and you know eventually you get something like this, where the engine says even though material is equal, black is essentially up two pawns. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I guess let me know if you like the French or a series on the French. Um, if you don't, uh, you know, probably going to do it anyway because I've been enjoying the French and I'm trying to stick with openings. Um, again, these are mostly for me to sort of hold me accountable to make me play games and analyze them. But I would like it if you got something out of it too. So uh, anyway, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Keep grinding those tactics.